Today we come together to celebrate the bountiful provisions of God, who meets all our needs according to His glorious riches. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr., thanking you as always on this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray that you're keeping the Lord Jesus Christ out front. And I also pray that you're staying safe in this extreme heat. Please, please, please be safe out there. We're praying for all of those who are struggling with it, which includes yours truly, because, I mean, regardless of how many ACs you have in the house, it's still going to be hot. So, but, uh, but nonetheless, though, this too shall pass. So, let's get started. Our morning scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8 reads as follows. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And we definitely pray that you are abounding in every good work. And if you need prayer, reach us at getprayer.com, get-prayer.com. Submit your prayer requests and take in all the prayer ideas and prayer journal ideas that we have up there. Uh, definitely uh, take advantage of that if you're starting your prayer walk with Jesus Christ. And maybe you just need some ideas. Well, get-prayer.com is there for those reasons. We update it. Uh, we, try, we try to do daily, but it, it does stay updated. Uh, and with that being said, we're going to pray for everybody right now. Heavenly Father, we gather in all of your great provision. You promise to bless us abundantly, ensuring in all things at all times we have all that we need. We thank you for your boundless grace and the understanding that we will abound in every good work through your provision. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge that your provision is perfect and timely. In the moments of need and uncertainty, you provide us with your love and guidance and your abundance. We ask you, Lord, to fill our hearts with the thankfulness and the gratitude and faith, knowing that you're always with us, guiding us, sustaining us, even when it feels like we're alone. But we know you're there. And we come to you today, praying that the Holy Spirit moves amongst us, renewing our strength and deepening our trust in your provision. Help our eyes to see your blessing and our hearts to receive your love and not just Thank you and complain about the next big thing. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, and we are back. And so our topic today is going to be good news for tired souls good news for tired souls we're coming from luke 6 21 go ahead and turn there turn to your bible to luke 6 21 and it reads as follows blessed are you who hunger now for you will be satisfied blessed are you who weep now for you will laugh let us pray Heavenly Father, we want to just lift up all of those right now, uh, continuing the conversation of praying for those who are out there in that heat working, praying for the family who does not have a box fan or air conditioner. We pray, Lord, you keep them hydrated, provide them with the necessary need to stay safe. For we all understand that these things are happening for your divine will. Help us use the correct co level of common sense to understand when to be out there and when not to be out there. We pray for those who are in the vehicles right now traveling that may not have AC. We pray that you keep them safe, Father. Pray that you keep the baby safe. Pray for the parents out there, Lord, that are out and about with their children. Help them remain vigilant and aware that they have their babies with them and not leave them in the car in this extremely hot weather. Lord, We every time it, we're experiencing this weather, there's a child left in a car somewhere because the parents are not thinking about them. I, I don't know anything about that life, Lord, but nonetheless, it exists. Pray for their awareness. Pray for them to prioritize their children before whatever duties and responsibilities they have and remember to take the children with them. 
It seems so surprising that we would have to say that, but yet here we are. And so I pray, Father, for everybody out here dealing with this heat. I know they're, they're getting weary from it, like myself, but we also know that it's only for a short period of time. And it wouldn't be summer without heat. These and all things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so our topic today is going to be good news for tired souls. Good news for tired souls. We're coming from Luke 6, 21. Go ahead and turn there. Turn in your Bibles to Luke 6, 21. And it reads as follows. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to just lift up all of those right now, uh, continuing the conversation of praying for those who are out there in that heat working, praying for the family who does not have a box fan or air conditioner. We pray, Lord, you keep them hydrated, provide them with the necessary need to stay safe. For we all understand that these things are happening for your divine will. Help us use the correct level of common sense to understand when to be out there and when not to be out there. We pray for those who are in the vehicles right now traveling that may not have AC. We pray that you keep them safe, Father. Pray that you keep the baby safe. Pray for the parents out there, Lord, that are out and about with their children. Help them remain vigilant and aware that they have their babies with them and not leave them in the car in this extremely hot weather. Lord, We every time it, we're experiencing this weather, there's a child left in a car somewhere because the parents are not thinking about them. I, I don't know anything about that life, Lord, but nonetheless, it exists. Pray for their awareness. Pray for them to prioritize their children before whatever duties and responsibilities they have and remember to take the children with them. It seems so surprising that we would have to say that, but yet here we are. And so I pray, Father, for everybody out here dealing with this heat, I know they're, they're getting weary from it, like myself, but we also know that it's only for a short period of time, and it wouldn't be summer without heat. These and all things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Good news for tired souls. We're all working to stay covered in this heat, by the way. <laughs> we are limiting what we're doing and how we're doing it to stay as covered as possible. According to the National Weather Center reports, we had a maximum heat index in Pennsylvania alone between 100 and 102 on Friday. On Saturday it was between 100 and 104. And when you're experiencing temperatures like this, you're not trying to be in it, you're trying to stay out of its way. So we hunkered down under a box fan or maybe an air conditioner because we desire covering. Regardless of what you look like, what you're living like, and, and where you are, we all have this one unifying desire. Stay covered out of this heat, out of this sun. We pour the water on our faces. We go to the local pool because we need to be covered. And when we're not covered, we get tired, irritable. Not because the heat is bad now, but when it gets excessive, it becomes more unbearable. Theologically speaking, now maybe some of you are in the heat right now and it's hard to find that covering to get relief. You're experiencing some spiritual heat stress. Your body is weary. You can't think straight because everything is running into everything else mentally. Maybe the words of Psalm 55, four through eight ring through your head. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me and horrors overwhelm me. And I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. 
yet I would wander far away. I would lodge in the wilderness, Salah. I would hurry to find a shelter from the raging wind and tempest. And like David, we can pray that, but we know we can't run. What we need to have is faith in a savior who died to ensure our earthly presence and your eternal rest. And it's in this hope through the birth, death, and resurrection of Christ Jesus, we hold on to the hope he gives us. So if you're here today and you feel like the world is on your shoulders, you need to shake that off and come into relationship with Jesus Christ because he's already overcome the world that you're in. And it's only through him will you become an overcomer. And it's in this good news that even though things don't go our way, those times where you thought you had lost it all, Jesus reveals all you need to know about where your situation is going and activates the Holy Ghost to guide you. For that, we are indeed blessed. Luke 6.21 is part of a bigger picture for tired souls ready for something good to happen. And the, the read starts at verse 17. We see Jesus went to a level place. The scripture says people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon came to experience three things. They came to hear him teach and be healed. They came for the removal of impure spirits and to possibly touch him because the scripture tells us in verse 19, power was coming from him and healing them all. These were tired souls looking for some good news in the situation and were receiving that good news. And if you do not receive that good news, it's because you don't believe Jesus heals and delivers. You don't get the miracles because if you don't believe, you don't receive. And it's here where he begins what is known as blessings and woes. Beginning at verse 20, looking at his disciples, he said, blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of God. And finally, back to today's focus on verse 21, blessed are you who hunger now for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now for you will will laugh. So how is this good news? First, you need to see the blessing that covers the physical need. The blessing that covers the physical need. Jesus Christ begins with blessing the situation at hand. Scripture says, blessed are you who hunger now. This is a present tense situation. He's not talking off into the distance in front of people who are suffering right there right then, right now. They came there to get the current problem solved. And he begins by addressing their need with saying they are blessed. To understand why Jesus says blessed first before addressing the current situation is to understand the word study of being blessed. To be blessed is to have God extend his benefits through Christ placed upon you through because of your faith in him Jesus Christ, making the connection to Hebrews 11:6, 6. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. The reward comes through Christ Jesus, whom you have been given over to, thus being the reason you cannot skip over a relationship with him. So now we come to the situation in in the here and now, the hunger. In the Greek, this has three forms. To be hungry, as in nourishment, food. To be needy and to desire earnestly. If you're tired today, there's good news in the fact that whatever's going on fits into one of these three forms and your hunger. And if you're here, and you're in a physical need for food today, you're in, a, you're in a need of something going on today in your life, you desire something today to happen from the Lord, I'm here to tell you that we serve a Lord that has been in the blessing business for a very long time. And that is what Hebrews 11, 8 takes the point. Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, 
and forever. So the same Jesus yesterday that provided, it's the same Jesus today that will provide, and it's the same Jesus, with God willing, if we wake up tomorrow, that will provide. So calm down. Relax. It's going to be okay. And it's such good news to know that not only do we have the Lord Jesus to cover our lives with blessing, but to also know that this blessing has a guaranteed response. Scripture says this, for you will be satisfied. These aren't words of just comfort and to make you feel good. Jesus Christ emphasizes that to be blessed is to stand by for the response. Do you know that you're blessed and that Jesus Christ will respond today? Do you know that it isn't over till it's over? Do you know that it is only a matter of if, it's not a matter of if, but only a matter of when Jesus makes a way for you? How many times has he done it already? Do you take into account what the Lord has already done for you, or are you just waiting for the other shoe to drop so that you can complain about that next. You see, here's the thing about spiritual warfare. Satan can't stop the blessing. He can slow it down. He can make it complicated, but he can't stop God from blessing you. But what he can do is make you a, what I call a yeah, but Christian. You can't give Jesus Christ the praise he deserves because you went from one woe to the next. Then Jesus solves that problem and then you go, yeah, but I've got this over here too. And then Jesus solves that one and you go, yeah, but I, I still have these issues to deal with. I, I'm glad God took care of that, but I still have this going on over here too. And I, you know, it's just, I, I totally get it. I do get it. And so you, you, you keep going on in that process. Oh, ye of little faith. That's all, that's all I got to say to you. All ye of little faith, stop for a moment and take in what the Lord has done for you today. Relinquish control of a tomorrow that is not promised to you. You're going through so much in your mind because God is never doing enough for you. How dare you? How dare you be in that mentality? Where is your faith? Is it covered by your fears, your worries? He's tending to you right now. So stay in step with him right now. Satisfaction is all is to be filled. And if Jesus says you're going to be filled, then it's going to happen. And then there's the blessing that covers tears. The good news is if you got a tired soul and you've been by yourself going over the things that have been going on in your life, whatever, whatever it is, just name something. More than likely, you've shed it some tears in a car, maybe in the bathroom, the door locked, maybe out in the park, on a bench. It all just comes rushing back to you all at once, and you're overwhelmed that when it's your, st you, you, you know, you get to that point to where no one can reach you. That's when you got to stop, you got to breathe, and remember that right now, as you shed those tears, the Lord has them covered in blessing. It's easy to forget that in the emotions, the current emotions, that this is true. Because you're so tired of going through the thing, whatever that is. But not only are they covered, your tears are in transition. You know, and now here's the thing about this. I know there are so many people out there that are in the business of victimization. It, it has been monetized. Have y'all seen this? People monetize their brokenness. They're not trying to come out of their brokenness. They have people who enable them to stay in their brokenness because they can monetize it now. Woe is me. Give me some money. Woe is me, give me more perks. They're not trying to ascend to the next level of success. 
They're not trying to raise up out of the conditions that maybe they were born into. They're not trying to come out of a situation that maybe they, they fell into during on hard times, but now they realize that, okay, if I stay here and just wallow in this, I can make some money. Happened to me a couple of years ago as a young investigative reporter living in North Carolina, I came across a family during Christmas time that had been let go by a factory. And oh man, we dressed that thing up. You know, we had them in front of the Christmas tree. There was no gifts. The kids had no shoes on and mom and dad are sitting there and they're trying to figure out Christmas. Now, everybody's looking at that like, wow, that sucks. And it, you know, at that time, it did. I felt bad for them because a lot of people got laid off. Like, like it happens ever so often. These companies, for whatever reason, fiscal year happens and boom, people got to go. I've been there numerous times myself. But here's the thing. I worked to get up out of that though. And so as the story goes, months, well, a couple few, few weeks later, the company calls me directly and says, Mr. Allen, we offered them their job back two weeks after that story aired. Because we, we looked at that and said, yeah, you know what? This is a little messed up. We gotta find something for these people to do to get them at least through Christmas. So we called them back and they did not accept the job because, well, the community was giving them all sorts of money and gift cards and gifts and everything and they didn't want to lose that. They chose to stay in the situation when they could have ascended and this is where we got to get better at it. Christ never wants to see you stay in that bad predicament. He is working on your behalf to get you from point A to point B. He's sending you people. He is sending you opportunity after opportunity. And you're saying no. And then when you stay there and once Satan fools you and misleads you, and then the gift cards run out and the GoFundMe money is gone, you go right back to being bad at God because he hasn't, he hasn't delivered you. He tried to. You said no. Now this is on you. You went into business for yourself, so you can't get mad at God when you find yourself by yourself. Repent. Turn back from your evil ways and accept the blessing of God through Christ Jesus and let him dry your tears when things go wrong and let him bring you into a new day. Jesus Christ doesn't keep you there. The scripture says this, for you will laugh. There's joy right around the corner if you just simply take Jesus Christ's hand and walk with him. Many of you all want to stay right where you are because like I said, you're getting attention. People are noticing you. They feel sorry for you. You get addicted to the empathy. And before you know it, you're missing the joy that you can have in, in following Jesus right around the corner. There could be bigger and better, but you've chosen. No, I'm not doing that. I've got good stuff going on right now. Jesus Christ is in the business of joy, grace, and love. And if we hold on to the hope that has been given to us by Christ, you will see your tears dry because the joy will be there. It's on its way. Don't get so misled by the world that you get lost in the religion of kindness and not in your relationship with Christ. They're doing it to look good. You're being used and you're accepting people taking advantage of you because you are getting a product from it. But at the end of the day, when they cannot use you no more, you get ignored and you will find yourself by yourself and I don't want that to occur. So it's time now to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and follow Jesus Christ. And if you can't get yourself up, if, you're, if the depression is too much, the stress is too high, let Jesus do it. Surrender all. Let Christ take it. Pick up your cross and follow him. Because if we hold on to that hope, we can push forward. But if you're here, 
and you're still trying to get through this life on your own without engaging Jesus Christ, those tears are going to fall because you're trying to figure it out on your own. And I can tell you this, my friend, it won't. It's not going to happen. You might be listening on the podcast in the car right now. I'm here to tell you right now, wherever you're going, whatever plan you had, it's not going to work. Now, not on its own. It's not going to work. And even if it does, it's only for a temporary time to fool you. Satan will say, see, you don't need God. You can do this yourself. But you don't see the temporary status of what you're doing. And you're going to go right back to where you were. And you're still going to be even more angry. And if you try it all, everything the world has to offer, you'll realize you'll never be good enough, perfect enough, kind enough, happy enough to fill the void of your tired soul. At the end of the day, you're still going to be tired because it's taking everything you've got to fill that void. That's why this is good news. He covers the needs with divine fulfillment, the tears with divine joy. And in a world like this, I'm glad that I have a heavenly father so that I and you can reach out to beyond this world because his promises are true and are without fault. Tell yourselves, if Jesus said it, he's gonna do it. Lean into that thought process today. Makes you stronger, wiser, and well, makes you happier. Now, maybe you need this good news, this hope that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but you may not have a church home or somewhere to go to begin this journey. Contact us at get-prayer.com get-prayer.com is there for you to contact us and see what we can do to help you get to where you need to be maybe we can reach out to some churches in your area to help you out because there's no reason for you to suffer on your own when the lord jesus christ has done everything needed for you to live on this earth in the peace and the covering out in that away from that spiritual heat that satan provided Maybe you're out there spiritually. Maybe you feel like your feet are to the fire and you, you just can't get no relief. Jesus Christ is there. He is the only way to get that relief. Don't be fooled out here. And if we can help you, we'll help you. So until next time, God willing, may God bless you. May heaven smile, smile upon you. And we'll talk to you next week. You take care.